Pre-populating form fields is an easy way to eliminate having to fill out the same information twice for your form submitters. This is a great setup for something like copying contact information from one form to another without the person having to fill everything in again, or if you are looking to send out a unique form URL so that you can attribute a form to a certain data collector. To get started with how you go about using this feature, you need to take the URL for the form and add information to it. When the page is loaded with this URL, the form will then automatically load information into certain fields. There are two different ways to get this information. The first way that we'll be taking a look at is if you know the exact information you want to use to populate the form. The second is if you want to fill in the information from another form. For our first example, we have a consent form that we're sending out from a certain branch and we'd like to automatically fill in the field that has the branch location as well as the contact info. As a tip, we recommend building your URL in a word processor document to easily view and assemble the URL just like we're doing here. In order to assemble our URL, we will first need the URL of the form that you want to pre-populate. As a reminder, this can be located under the share tab of your form like you can see here. The next component is going to be the field label that you want to populate, as well as the information you want to populate the field with. To find your field label, you want to navigate to the build section of your form and then select the field that you'll be using for your URL. As a reminder, for our example, we know we want the branch location to be automatically filled and can use that as our field label. While we're on the topic of editing your field, it's important to think about if you want your submitters to see this field or if you'd like for them to see it, but you don't want them to edit it. If you'd like to pass the info to a field but hide it, you can select the hidden option here on the left. If you'd like for your team to see the field but not make any edits to the information that's already there, you can select the read only option. It's important to note that any spaces in the field label should be replaced with an underscore. For example, for our branch location, it should be branch underscore location, since web addresses are not allowed to have spaces in them. Now that we've gathered our needed information, we can assemble the URL. As an aside, it's important to note that if you'll be attempting to pass data that will likely contain spaces or line breaks, like if you're using a short or long answer field, this will break the URLs we're about to construct. There's no way around this, unfortunately, as spaces will break any URL. We encourage you to only pre-populate form fields if they will not contain any spaces. Let's go ahead and use the option that we had previously copied into our sample document. Here's the structure that we want to follow when creating the URL. Let's go over the importance of the three symbols that you see in this example. Starting with the question mark, this goes in between the form URL and the first field name from the form that we're trying to pre-populate. You will not use this symbol again after inserting it here. The next symbol is our equal sign that goes in between each field name from the form and the information that you want to fill that field in with, whether you type it in manually or want to use info from another form. You will use this for each field that you want to pre-populate if you're using several fields. The last symbol is our end sign, and this goes in between each of the field info and the next field name that you want to pre-populate. You will use this for every set of fields that you want to add to your URL. With all of those details, let's move forward with using the structure to construct our URL. As you can see, we have our form URL, followed by a field label, and the data that we'd like to use for the field that we will be pre-populating. As a reminder, to have multiple labels, let's also add my name as an option for pre-populating to show the use of the symbols and what it's like to pre-populate multiple fields. When you are done with the setup, distribute your custom URL rather than the one under publish to have the information pre-filled. Let's go ahead and open the URL that we had previously created on our Word document to see the fields that are being pre-filled. Earlier in the video, we mentioned that we'd also be exploring how to accomplish this with using information from another form. 
In our earlier example, we knew the exact information we wanted to use to populate, but for this example, let's say we are directing a person from one form to another and don't want them to have to fill out duplicate information. Or if we have a multi-stage form with different parts, the only difference is that we need to use field IDs instead. If you want to find the field ID, you need to first go to the form where you want the information to be pulled from. After you're on the form where the information will be pulled, you need to copy the needed field ID by going to the builder mode on the form and then selecting the field and then copying the ID from the URL with the field selected. In this case, we're going to copy the ID for the name and the branch location to the second form URL. Let's take a look at building this URL using this new information. Instead of inserting the exact information that will be used like we did in our earlier example, we're going to copy and paste the field labels on the appropriate spots of the URL for the second form. After finishing the link, we need to decide how best to use it, which will depend on your use case. Just a few options that we'd like to highlight. One is you can add the link to a confirmation email with the custom message. Two, you can add the link to a notification email within a custom page. Three, you can display the link on a submit action thank you page. And lastly, you can direct the user to that link as a submit action. For our example, we're gonna add the URL that we created as a submission message that will instantly redirect to the new URL we created after the first form has been submitted. Our first step is navigating to the first form that will be filled out and then over to the settings tab on the top right. From here, we wanna select the welcome and submission option over on the left. Next step is gonna to be to add a submission message by clicking this button. After that, we're gonna select redirect to a custom URL under the option settings. Let's make sure we're copying the link for the second form that we had just created and then paste that link in the box. We can save our settings on the top right to make this change final. And then our next step is testing this out. We can click on the view live form option on the top right from the builder tab and then fill out the form as we normally would. After hitting the submit button at the bottom, the form is automatically redirected to the second form with all of the information from the first form already filled in. That's it for our video and setting up pre-populating form fields. Thank you for watching.